begin this more formally. <laughs> My fellow cadets, CEO, Captain Stafford, along with all officers present here tonight, the Air Cadet League and sponsoring committee, and all family and friends, I'm very proud to speak in front of all of you, and I'd like to thank you all for being here tonight. I started my cadet career at the age of 12, following the footsteps of my brother. We were introduced to cadets by two friends of ours who both ended up quitting. <laughs> the squadron CEO at the time was Captain Ronald Craddock. The warrant officers were warrant officer second class Spoke and warrant officer first class Harris. My flight, which I believe went by the name of Challenger Flight, was led by Flight Sergeant Heinkel at the time, and along with Flight Sergeant Andrew Norwood, who was the 2IC. Um, we don't know, but... <laughs> All of the mentioned have been a huge inspiration <laughs> on my journey through Air Cadets. Captain Craddock was a commanding officer that had, been given, that had given everything of himself to the cadets, and to this day, I don't think he's here tonight, but I normally see him always coming to our annuals, to our uh, mess dinners, and many of the squadron events still supporting the squadron. As I grew older and began to advance through the original rank system, <laughs> skipping flight corporal and whatnot, I began to take on leadership roles at the squadron and at all summer camp courses that I had gone to. I've been to basic, leadership course, aviation course, glider, then power, and luckily I got on advanced power last year, and hopefully this summer I'll continue to fly. Big inspirations for me as, going, as, as a young cadet on the journey of becoming a good leader were thanks to Warrant Officer First Class Spoke and Warrant Officer First Class Sarah Heinfeld at the time. It was always my motive to become like them and courageously continue from where they had left off. I'd like to thank many people that have guided me through my cadet career and helped me achieve many of the desired goals in the Air Cadet Program. Captain Stafferis for her nonstop hard work in helping me run the squadron and always being there for the cadets. The Air Cadet League of Canada with Mr. Paul Horowski and the sponsoring committee with Ms. Almeida and with all the volunteers for their hard work and guidance and opportunities that they brought forward towards me. I'd like to thank all the CIs at the squadron with their hard work and help on all the teams we have running. Especially to CI Hankel for really helping me with the drill team. The drill team, uh, we came in eighth place this year and surprisingly I came in fourth place as the commander thanks to my secret recipe, which no one will ever know. <laughs> there actually is a recipe, just no one really knows about it. Um, I'm extremely thankful for all of this. I would like to thank CI Andrew Norwood for all his guidance he has given to me on the journey to becoming a pilot, along with Lieutenant Billick, who first taught my first ground school when I was in level two, and I had no clue what was going on. Thanks to all of these people, especially for all the help they have provided me with and made me continue to pursue my career as a pilot. Now it's story time. <laughs> okay, so I was on a glider course and my instructor was a really old man. I don't know how old he is, but if we were to look at him, you think he's like eight years old. His name is Rex. My sister thinks he's the cutest guy ever. He's cute. He was gonna give him flowers, so we went flying together. <laughs> we stopped because we saw those uh, lilacs. Lilac flowers, and they smell really nice. <laughs> so we picked them off of the person's property, but. <laughs> Six thirty. We in the car. We're supposed to get it to him, but it was really sunny, and it all dried up. So we had to throw them out in the end. But I still told them that we wanted to give him flowers. <laughs> But anyway, that's not my story. <laughs> <laughs> so I was on course, and you do 20 solos before, I mean, you do 20 dual flights before you're allowed to 22. do your first solo. And it was around the 17th solo, no, dual flight. And he sat down, he had four, stu four students. It was me, this other girl, and two other male boys. <laughs> okay, true. He sat down with us one night at the picnic table and said, 
I don't think any of you are ready to solo yet. There was three more solos left. We already did 80% of the dual flights we were supposed to do, and he told us we aren't ready to solo. So I'm just going nuts and sweating, like more than I'm sweating now. <laughs> and I really didn't know what to do at that time. So I was just thinking, what if I get sent home, I fail my solo, I have to listen to my mom all the time. <laughs> I might get patine, this guy. Um, and so the first thing I did, I went right up to my room, ate, because my mom always brought me popcorn and stuff to eat, and Marco Polo bars. <laughs> Sat down, and the whole night I just studied and studied and studied. We had lights out at 11 o'clock, but you take your, actually I won't tell you, okay, you take your blanket and you cover the door and then the light doesn't shine through so they think you're sleeping. <laughs> um, on the windows, you take your other blanket, you put it on top and so all the cracks get filled so none of the light goes through that. And if you're really extreme, you could just make like a whole fort under your desk yes. and put your light under and study. So that's what I did for the whole night. I studied for about three, four hours. Colors. And I kept studying, studying, and reviewing, and pretending I was flying with like a box and a stick. <laughs> yeah. And eventually, the plungers. I finally got to my 20th duel. He was very happy with me, and I started, began to solo and so on, and eventually received my license. It just goes to show that with a lot of hard work and a lot of effort, like even though someone might tell you that something's not possible, you can still probably do it. I never thought I was going to be able to be a pilot because I wear glasses and I was always just told that bad vision is not good to be a pilot, bad teeth, bad hearing, etc. <laughs> <laughs> all these See? things that people tell you and it's totally so not true, but I just like told my story I want to <laughs> for her wonderful picture-taking skills. And I'd also like to thank Second Lieutenant Sudrudin. Although he's new at the squadron, he's really relieved a lot of work off me this year, especially with university. <laughs> I don't have to go to band and I don't have to go to flag party. He's there. So I get to have laughing. more time to study and whatnot. Yeah, we're all back to what <laughs> <laughs> I'd also greatly like to thank my family for the strong support that they have always given me. Although my mom is always known for always running around and yelling. I have to say that I'm really proud of her as nothing would be accomplished if it wasn't for her. Along with my dad with his strong support towards me and the rest of the youngsters in my family, I'm very proud of you all, especially little Missy. Just continue following my footsteps and you'll be good. <laughs> now, I'm already beginning to miss the nets and see how difficult it is to retire. How on earth will I be able to survive my 65th retirement? Huh? What are you saying? You're only 19. Yeah, but how is he going to be? I'm joking. Okay. Think, may I wish the best of luck to the future of the squadron Thank and you. all of you could have surrounded here today. Continue to treat the squadron as your second home and carry on with strong hearts from where I have left you at. Support one another, be a team, never quit, and I will always be proud of you. Thank you and God bless.